Hello, AnimDesk readers. I'm Brent George, and I promised the people over at AnimDesk a, an exclusive iAnimate style tutorial video. And well, here it is. Let's get started. Um, what I want to talk today about is, is motion capture, but more specifically, I wanted to talk about what it's uh, what I think motion capture can uh, bring to uh, to an, to an animator. I like so many other animators at the beginning wasn't really interested in, in, in motion capture. I thought it was, well, frankly, I just thought it was kind of boring, um, just capturing real life and just you know replicating it digitally. Not only did it normally not look very good, um, I usually found most motion capture stuff kind of felt you know dangerously into the uncanny valley territory. But I also wasn't interested because as an animator, we learn to to understand and to characterize life as opposed to just replicating it. And uh, I think that motion capture kind of misses that point a little bit. So, um, you know, it's funny because I got into motion capture um, through through my my game experience. I come from more from film and television. And uh, when I got into games, you know, learning about motion capture was kind of a necessity. And uh, once there, once learning it, I realized, wow, there's like a gold mine of reasons as to why you know, this actually makes me a better animator for like lots of different reasons. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about why I think that is. Um, and uh, I'm going to do that in a very, very kind of short period of time because this is supposed to be a quick, a quick video. Um, and I think I'm going to do that with an example. So let me show you that example right now. So what we're looking at here is Motion Builder. Motion Builder is what we typically, uh, it's what we're, we're mostly using software-wise over at, um, well, it's in, in the motion capture uh, workshops, this is primarily what we learn or we use so that I can um, get people involved with understanding what motion capture is and, and how to manipulate it in very creative ways. The whole program, the whole course was designed around the idea of uh, motion capture for animators as opposed to just motion capture in general. Although anyone is welcome to take it, I'm sure they're gonna learn quite a bit. Um, the, um, the idea here is what we're looking at is motion capture scene. And this particular scene was provided by um, the, uh, the amazing folks over at um, um, Organic Motion. Uh, they develop a motion capture system called uh, Open Stage. And this particular system captures the data and it transfers it um, into a scene like, like Motion Builder um, as skeletal data, which is why if I hit the play button right now, you're going to see a character move around. Um, it's just looping the same thing over and over again right now but this was originally a much longer scene. So it's just a skeleton. And um, what's interesting, you're also noticing these other four cameras, these, these other four objects here, these cameras. Now, what, this, what you're looking at actually is a digital replica or, uh, of, of the actual scene. So this would be obviously the, the, the actor and these cameras were, the, um, uh, were the, 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 the capturing source. So the cameras are actually in the, 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 the exact position relative to one another and relative to the character in the middle of the stage. Now, um, why this is extra cool is if I actually look through any one of these cameras, I'm actually seeing the recorded video. Uh, what's different about this system versus a, um, say like um, other optical based systems like Vicon or OptiTrack is that this system, unlike the others where they capture, they have like these skin tight suits and they capture these little, uh, these little uh, uh, reflective balls on them. This one actually captures the actual video. So as an animator, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in having not only the data, but uh, I also like to have some video reference because it allows me to make sure that the data was captured properly. And if I have to repair it in any way, I could do that with the reference. Um, now, more importantly, as an animator, I'm not necessarily so worried about the, the, the motion itself either. I'm, I'm really kind of more interested in the, in the poses because my workflow involves setting down a foundation of key body poses in the right sort of um, story, uh, body mechanics sort of describing moments. I need to be able to, to, to recreate a motion with all those, those very, very key um, 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 moments of the action to be able to, to, to replicate an action in any kind of clarity or any kind of authenticity. So um, what this whole tutorial is about is about not, not really thinking about this scene as a motion capture scene, but thinking it more like the world's best reference for, for an animator, because I have these synchronized four camera sources. I also have um, uh, motion that's actually pretty good. Uh, this is, you know, it's, 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 you know, I'd say probably 80% of the way there. It's not perfect. Um, 
but um, I, d I don't need it to be absolutely perfect right now because I'm going to use this to just grab the key poses that I want and then I'm going to build them up. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to show you me animating um, really. I'm going to show you how I extract to get those key poses and then you'd be able to just sort of take it and run. Uh, so what I, what I really do, the, the key thing is for me to understand what I need to get, what, what poses do I want? Because I can capture them very easily because I mean, all the animation is there, right? Um, but I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't want all the, uh, the, the motion. I just want key poses and I want to extract them in a very clean way. I don't want keys on every frame like motion capture tends to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do what's in motion build. It's called plotting and I'm plotting to the control rig. So, uh, oops, no, I have the wrong character. Uh, let's put a, let's bring a character in there first. How about, so let me go and drop in, uh, our Lisa character. There we go. There's Lisa. Uh, let me get her actually. Dr um, driven by the character that is in the scene. Uh, let me also go and just hide the cameras and that other old skeleton, the original data, data skeleton. And let me just hide her skeleton. And then if I hit the play button, okay, we can now see, and I, let me give you a better vantage point here. I'll go into a uh, into the uh, kind of a more of a perspective view here so you can better appreciate what we're, what we're seeing. So there she is. Now that's, you know, a minute ago she was just in the T-pose, but now she's actually, um, you know, the, the motion from the, the, the skeleton that I got out of open stage two uh, has been, is, is, that motion has been retargeted onto her. And uh, so now I want to go through the process of just extracting all the key moments and then cleaning up those poses and uh, moving on with my, my very keyframe workflow. So, now I want to go plot that to her control rig. And the put control rig is really just the, the motion builder's uh, controller setup. It's, it's a more animator-friendly way of manipulating the character and setting keys on it. So I want to do that pretty much right away. Let me just bring that down there. So plot to control rig. So now her data is on this control rig. So you can see it's, it's yeah, motion builders very good at just taking the data that was on a skeleton and then remapping it to a control rig. And now the control rig is what's con controlling this Lisa character. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the story mode. Story mode's like the tracks editor or mixer. If you're familiar with uh, Maya or um, you know, biped and motion builder, or I'm uh, sorry, max, I'm going to go. It's way, way more powerful. You're going to kind of, if, if you start using motion builder, you're really going to see what I'm talking about. Um, but let me just create a, a character, a track, uh, and just set it to the Lisa character. Okay, there we go. So this track is now ready to receive and to drive this character. And if I just right click down here on this track now and say insert current take, I've now brought her data, this motion data has been brought down in a, in a kind of a, a friendly clip format that works in this sort of nonlinear editor that is the story mode. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another character animation track. And let me just, I'm just going to trade places with these two tracks. I want this track to be up above here. Um, and I'm going to switch that also to Lisa character. Then I'm going to hit this little key button here. So my scene's ready. I can now analyze this motion. Uh, it'll be a little easier if I zoom in here a little bit. So let me just go and hit A. Now it's going to zoom my story mode here. Uh, as you can see, I have a little time scrubber here, and it's synchronized with the one up here. Um, but uh, you can use either one. So now I can go ahead and just analyze this motion here. Uh, I like to often do this with the video because sometimes the data is not going to be 100% perfect and I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to rely on, you know, maybe some of those imperfections. I want to look at the data with, along with the, um, the, the character, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the actual background play, the, the actor themselves, because I can make sure I, I can see all the little teeny details that I want to see. Uh, now, with this little key mode in, uh, um, enabled, and with her rig selected up here, I can now just scrub through and hit K, which is going to key and set to full body mode. So it's going to set a key on her entire character rig, which is like setting um, a uh, a full body key. So if I were to, in Maya, I'd had all the if I selected all the controllers, and hit the S key, it'd be like doing the same thing. So this should be very familiar with anyone or to anyone who has a very pose to pose. Um, sort of first block pass methodology in their workflow. It's the same thing, except rather than having to create them from scratch, I have this data that's there with, with you know, for the most part, you know, somewhere between 80 and 90% of the way there, um, and these multiple angles that I can use to help 
inform my decisions on what the pose should be. Now, I'm, I mean, animators are lately in feature films are pouring very, very, very meticulously over these these uh, these reference videos that they make for their scenes, and they only have the one angle, and they have no, you know, it takes. This is the, the part that takes me the longest is this, this the blocking phase where I really need to really analyze and really understand what the character is doing and when. Here we can get that to that point very, very, very quickly, which is kind of what I want to show you. And while I do it, I'm learning something about body mechanics all along because I'm working from real, real reference, um, very three-dimensional reference. Um, so I'm just going to scrub along here and I'm going to grab my poses. So I'm going to grab a pose here at the beginning. It's going to be my starting pose. Um, and uh, I'm hitting K, like I said, and I'm just going to look for these, 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 these important poses. Now, I have a, a methodology that I teach that I've been teaching for quite a while. I call it the anatomy of an action, and it's a way that, uh, that I break down body mechanics into sort of their, their core physics. So I'm looking for like extreme ups, extreme downs, extreme lefts, extreme rights, um, and I'm also looking for very, very important uh, physical moments like collisions with the ground, uh, moments where you take off from the ground. These are what I consider integral to any any action. And if 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 you know if you learn enough um, how to spot them, then you can craft them from scratch as a keyframe animator, and or you can learn to spot them from reference or from motion capture data, like I'm showing you here, and you can build a really really good base to work from. So I'm just going to keep going through. I'm not going to have time to really explain exactly why I'm choosing all these poses, but I think a lot of you are going to have a pretty good idea um, why um, I'm picking the ones I am. So this one here is it's a kind of a takeoff with this one foot. So I'm, I'm considering that an important enough moment to, to grab. Um, I'm going to see another takeoff moment in the background foot here. So right around there, that's another important moment. Um, I'm going to now see um, a collision with the... And you can see, see how the, this is why I like to have the video. The, the foot, the data, the data on the foot wasn't perfect. It didn't land and lock down uh, exactly where I want it to be. Um, and it's because I never spent any time cleaning up this data. I'm just taking it super, super raw. No passes were done. And, uh, you know, this is because I wanted to be able to be up and running really, really fast. I want to go shoot without, uh, really quickly in, in like, in something like open stage, uh, prototype an action really fast, get in an emotion builder, um, analyze it like this, and then just extract the key poses, and then, keyframe from there. So um, in the video, I can clearly see that the foot plant's there. So I'm going to grab that pose. Um, then it's like a full extension pose that I'm looking for here. Obviously, that's kind of the, the whole point of this action is a kick. So I want to make sure I capture that moment. And then I'm looking for a contact right here. And then I'm looking for a takeoff right here on the other foot. And then what you're going to see is kind of another takeoff on that other foot and then it's going to be an up pose i'm looking for here and then i'm looking for another contact here no actually not there there and then i'm looking for a down pose and i'm just looking at like i'm looking at the silhouette I know I'm, I'm, there's lots of identifiers as what those extremes are the ups and the downs are easy to spot because i can see pixels moving up and then they no longer move up anymore and they start coming down. So that's a pretty good indication that's my, my up pose. Um, and there, again, there's no exact science here. This is just um, um, sort of a, uh, a kind of my, <laughs> my methodology packed into like a quick 15, 20 minute video. So that's the contact. And then I'm looking for that down. So there's the down there, I think. That doesn't have to be super perfect. And then I'm looking for kind of another up here which I call the, the recovery pose, which is where the character, the, the, uh, the, the body mechanic wants to come back up into a natural position. And then I'm going to look for a subtle pose where it's coming back down. Gravity kind of settles that action back into a natural position. Okay, so it looks kind of like I've done nothing other than set some keys. But I assure you, I actually have captured these poses. I could have done the same, really, theoretically, by just having all, you know, the... Um, the, the original take I had, I would have had keys on every frame here, and then I could have went and deleted everything I didn't want. But I like this workflow better for a couple of reasons. The major reason is I can now test it very easily, and it's very non-destructive. If I, if I mute this track here, you can see um, what I'm – well, it'll be easier if I, if I just change this to the, the perspective view. You're about to see what this, what, this, uh, what this extracted key pose animation looks like. Okay, so it looks a little raw, a little rougher on the edges, and it's because it's only just those key poses. I don't have any breakdowns in there yet, and there might be a couple things that I'm missing. And uh, I, for the purpose of this video, I'll never be able to make this perfect, but I think you're going to get a pretty good idea as where I'm going with this. Um, so it's already looking pretty cool. I mean, the action's there. 
the timing is there. It just has problems with some things are missing and the spacing is definitely an issue. So let me go back in. Um, I'll go back to this view here. And let me go and um, unmute this track again. And now I can see what I might be missing. So one thing is for sure, I don't need this long, long pause from, from 360. I'd rather grab something maybe closer to, I want it right before she starts to move. So let's, start, let's try something like 375. I'm going to grab that. Okay, and I'm going to delete this one here. I don't, I don't want this one. Okay, and I'm going to actually move this, this clip so that I'm, uh, I'm only starting where I want to start it. Um, I can actually zoom this timeline up here again. I'm just going to go and right click and say um, fr frame start and end. And there we go. So now what I have is um, starting a little earlier so I don't have that floaty time because I'm kind of thinking I'm making this more for a game, a game maybe and I don't want it to be really, really long at the beginning. Uh, it's already too long for most game designers to uh, uh, preference but uh, we'll, we'll make do with what we have. So here... I'm going to kind of grab a breakdown here because there's a bit of a dip, almost like a small anticipation that I'm seeing here. Okay, so I want to grab that. Remember, it's very important that I unmute this. Otherwise, I'm still just going to be looking at only the key poses here that I've extracted. I want to be able to see all the information in between. And the only way I'm going to say that, see that is by having this on. Okay. Um, so now I have a little bit of a, a, a bit of a anticipation first. And then there's that up. And then that was the that was a, um, a takeoff pose here. That's good. And there's another takeoff pose in the background. That's good. And that's another contact. That's good. So I'm pretty sure that I want something. You can see that there's something that happens here. And this is another thing my brain scans for is I look for change. I'm looking for, is there something that I need between two poses to better describe the action? Is there an arc in there? Is there also maybe something changes in the way the movement is happening? If you watch... If you watch from here to here, it looks pretty linear almost between these two poses almost. But then from here to here, something changes. She leans back a bit more. So I want to kind of find that first pose or the first frame that that starts to happen right around here. And I want to capture that because that's a breakdown because there's something important going on with the way that the hips are moving right here that I think are important. They kind of move forward a little bit and there's a bunch of, thing, a bunch of stuff going on in the upper body that I really want to, I want to capture. Now, this is very, very uh, personal preference here. This is very, very um, subjective. This is really up to your own eye and what you want and how many key poses you might want to have. And some people don't like to have breakdowns at all. You could just take only the key poses uh, using this technique and then bring all the key poses into your scene and then do your own breakdowns. I mean, this is really as involved as you want it to be. I like, bring, I like to take some of these, these breakdowns. Even if I don't use them, I'm going to want them. And then I can modify them or I can delete them and then do my, my own ones if I want. But I'm going to grab them now just because I just want to kind of fully explain um, just how powerful this workflow can be. So um, same thing here. Notice that this is all really about the foot coming in and then the upper body starts to recover. So I'm going to kind of decide I'm going to grab a breakdown right around here as two to help me with this, okay? This is also gonna really help make the posing or the timing a little bit less sort of floaty and it's gonna give a bit more contrast to what's happening in this action because these breakdowns are gonna better, better help the spacing between the poses. Okay, um, then there's that, that collision there and then there's that. Okay, well, so just so I don't make this the most epic long um, <laughs> video on earth, I'm going to just say that I'm going to pretend that this is exactly what I want. Um, I could spend a lot more time analyzing that and going back and forth and testing, but I think I'm going to be pretty happy with this. I know I'm going to be able to make something good with it. That's for sure. Because I still, I'm going to use this. This is just a way of prototyping really quickly. Some of those key poses. So I have timing and the basic body mechanics that are there that I can now take and do whatever I want with. And that's the beauty of this workflow. So um, if I go back into this angle here again, I can better preview what I have now. You're going to see that there's um, been some dramatic improvements to that action because of those breakdowns that I've grabbed. There's definitely some weirdness going on in the hips, um, so I'd want to tweak that as well. There's, um, if I look from this angle here, the hip does some weird kind of backwards motion. Um, I can fix all of that because now I just have a bunch of poses as if I just keyframe pose these, right? The head's not doing exactly what you want, no problem, fix it. If the, the body's not doing something uh, between two poses, fix it. That's kind of the general rule. But the point is, I got this blocked in really, really, really fast. If I was a game um, animator, I could even just do a really quick pass at cleaning this up and then throw it in the game engine. 
and then just play with it, see, without spending lots of time polishing it and, 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 and then throwing it all away because it doesn't work with the gameplay mechanics. I could just quickly prototype stuff doing it this way. Um, because working with mocap this way also is very, very malleable. So I can make big changes very easily. So the last thing I'm going to show you is what to do from here. So you can now work like a keyframe animator. That's actually pretty easy. So I have this clip here. Okay. Uh, the trick to this recipe is I need to right click on it and say export clip. I'm going to call it kick clip. I've already done this once. So uh, I'll just save over top of that file. And now kick clip exists, um, as an external file. I'm going to now make a new take. Now the take system in Motion Builder is pretty cool because it's like having almost many scenes in one scene. Uh, I'm going to say no to this so I have a clean take with no animation data on it at all. Okay? It just has that one pose. But there's no, as you can see as I scrub through here, there's nothing going on. I'll turn off story mode as well. I don't need story mode anymore because I'm pretty much done with it. I can always go back and um, maybe make, you know, extract a few more key poses again if I don't like what I'm seeing. But uh, once I do what I'm about to do, you're kind of you're kind of moving forward. You're kind of, you're drawing a line in the sand and saying, this is my base. Now I'm going to keyframe from here. So there's not really a lot of going back after I do what I'm doing uh, right now. So now I'm going to go and say file, load character animation. And I'm going to um, bring in kick clip. But the, the most important thing to, to, to note here is to make sure you choose this uh, to copy animation, no retargeting, because that's going to bring in only key poses. And it's not going to put keys on every frame. And that would kind of defeat the purpose. So I'm going to say open to this. And now you'll see if I select her here, there, there are, there are my key body poses right here all along that timeline. Um, the story mode is not on. So there's, um, this is no longer driving anything. What I'm getting is, if I hit play now is just keys that are on my rig. So as you can see, there it is. Now I have my scene. It's all blocked out. Um, it's far from perfect. As you can see, lots of problems. But now the, the, the next step for me is to just go in there um, just like I would a, a keyframe animator and uh, fix those poses. And I have these um, uh, videos that I can actually use um, as, a, um, as a reference. Quick note, as you can see, the videos are not synchronized with the, the action anymore. It's because when I do, when I bring in that clip, it, re it starts the clip uh, much earlier in the timeline. So I would have to go and knowing where my, my, my key started, I could just go and grab all these keys and make sure they start at 375 and then I'm good to go. It's going to be synchronized with the video again, just, um, just so I don't, if someone wants to kind of follow along with this tutorial, they don't get lost and wonder why, what just happened there. Um, so that's it really. Now I can go, I can even play with timing. I can fix silhouettes. I can make them stronger. I can make her kick harder. I can make her extend long, uh, further. That's one of the things I would definitely want to do with this pose here. You can see she's not even fully extending her leg. All this can be done. So I can not only make it more like the original uh, footage, but I can also characterize it, exaggerate it. I could do all those wonderful things that animators do. Um, so that's it for my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you're um, you know, interested to learn more, swing by iAnimate and, um, and take a look at what we got going on. You can also swing by Organic Motion site and uh, take a look at uh, more of what they have to offer. Thanks so much.